Okay, hi everyone. Welcome to the second part of 3D Fundamentals. So here you'll see, this should be roughly where you've uh, finished off with exercise one, um, with the pre-recorded YouTube tutorial, um, which I will link in the description. And what I wanted to do in exercise two is what I think is an important learning technique for learning 3D, which is to take something that someone has already made and you know, try to adapt it, try to change it, try to use it as a base for doing something interesting. And as I've shown you during class, what we're gonna do with this one is sort of turn it into this sort of funny animation where the room kind of packs up itself and becomes this dancing figure. And if I turn the lights on in the rendered mode and play it, it also goes with sound. So what I'm gonna show you at the beginning of this video is uh, where we can download some uh, Creative Commons licensed sound and also where we can download some motion capture data. So if I sort of zoom further ahead here, we've got this section where all of the objects sort of transform and become this <laughs> somewhat little bit strange uh, dancing figure and transitions into using the motion capture data of the figure as a structure onto which we can sort of stick all of our objects and really quite quickly have this, you know, it's, it starts to become something. The bedroom has transformed into this theatrical environment, which I've also used lighting to sort of um, change the mood. Okay, so this is the animation that we're going to learn. And if I zoom back and just go into my material preview mode here, you'll see that we're also going to go through some very simple animation techniques uh, keyframing the location, the rotation, and the scale of objects, as well as that little bit of very basic rigging to get um, our objects to stick onto this motion capture data. Okay, so first of all, you'll need to get some sound and you'll need to get some uh, motion. So for sound, I'll link this in the description. I went to uh, ccmixter.org and I found uh, this track here. This is the attribution rights, Memories of Better Times. I can probably research it here. I'm not sure if I can search by title, let's just see. Okay, so this was the, the track that I downloaded. And when you click download, it'll also give you um, the credits, which you should always keep with any work you make. Anytime you use um, other people's material, if you have permission to do so, it's always important to credit them. So you can download the music there. The second thing is the motion capture. Um, so the motion capture file, I've also got this link here. This is from a really interesting um, university study and I downloaded the first zip file of BVH directories. And then when I'm in that file, uh, it'll give you a whole bunch of different um, zip folders and it'll also give you these um, information sheets which tell you sort of what's in which one. And I went into all the ones that had dance coded. And I think I went for the first one, this expressive arms pirouette, which was in folder number five and file number two. Okay, so let's jump back into Blender and they're the files that I'm going to import. So I'll just go back into um, where you guys are probably up to, which would be uh, this part of the animation. And I'll see how much of this I can go through for you. Okay, so first of all, I want to bring in the, uh, the sound. So if I jump over here, there's a little plus button up here and I can bring in the video editing tab. And this is actually, oh, I've still got the sound there, I'll just delete that. Um, this is actually where we will um, compile our animation later. But at the moment, I'm just gonna use this section of Blender, um, the sequencer to bring in some sound. So I'll press Shift A and, oh, am I getting my key? Cast? Okay, not in this section. Shift A and I'll bring in add uh, sound and then I will navigate to wherever I downloaded that sound in music, uh, memories of better times, add sound strip. And another thing I want to do, if you toggle the button N, N for Nelson, you'll be able to get the properties of the sound strip and I want to display the waveform. It's really helpful when you're animating to be able to see the waveform of the sound, just so you can see when there's interesting moments coming up that you might want to use in your animation. And now if I press space bar to play, we can hear the music. 
Okay, so um, let me just jump back in to uh, the animation section. Okay, so I press play, we hear the music. That's great. Second thing I want to do is bring in that motion capture file. So I will uh, import this time, import, and I'm going to import uh, BVH. And I just have to go, I store them in a slightly different place on my computer. I go to my da, 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 CG motion capture, the first zip file, uh, uh, subfolder 5, and that 502, which is what that information sheet said. So I'll import that, and if I zoom out, I've got this motion here. And now I believe if I press play, we will see this motion here. And if I zoom forward, we'll see it dance. So at the moment, there's a few problems. It's obviously much too big. And the animation starts a little bit uh, early. We want it to start later, but we can change all of that. First of all, I'm just going to scale it down by pressing S. I need to turn on my screencast, sorry. There we go. S to scale down my figure, just so it's sort of a, um, a good size relative to the bedroom. I don't know, something like that looks about right. And then I'll just press G and Y and just sort of pop that figure in the bedroom. And as you saw from um, the end of the previous tutorial, um, they had organized their scene quite well into different categories, and I want to keep the same thing going. So as I've just brought in that BVH file, it just kind of randomly went into the last um, section that I had open, which was the bed. I, I just want to do a little bit of reorganizing. So with the armature here selected, I'll press M to move it, I'll make a new collection and I'll call it Dance Motion. Okay, so there's Dance Motion. And I will just hide it for the time being. And I'm also going to just move some things around which I left unfinished. I want the bed in the main collection and I want this one that's called Scene. My lights should be in my camera and lights. So I'll just drag those into there and then I'll delete using the key X that empty folder. Okay, and you can see by the fact that my bed has moved, I actually have some keyframes left over here from when I was testing. But let's go back to the beginning. Okay, so first of all, I'll just click on some of these items and I'll remove their keyframes, um, clear keyframes, by right clicking and then I left click on that. And I'll just check if there's anything else that still has keyframes. That's got a keyframe, I'll clear the keyframes. And I think I also put a keyframe on the lighting here. But maybe we'll start with the lighting. That's a nice enough place to start. So what I've got, if your animation tab doesn't look like mine, um, I've got this, um, I'll, I'll just probably make it look like what yours does, which is probably something like, if I go back here and go to Dope Sheet, your animation tab probably looks something like this, where you might have two viewing tabs and um, the Dope Sheet. And the Dope Sheet shows us the timing of our keyframes. So to make a new tab, I just go into the top corner here and I drag it down and then I just drag this one up and I want to be able to see our sound file so here in, uh, instead of the dope sheet I want to see our video sequencer so it's got that sound file at the bottom um, and what I'm going to do at the beginning with the lights I think they might still be keyframed as well oh no they're not that's nice okay um, with the lights Hmm, they must be keyframed. Oh, yes, okay, they are. All right, they're keyframed down here, of course. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll just go back up to where their settings are at full, and I will just clear out these keyframes that I left in when I saved my file after I've made a few changes. So let me just clear that back to what you will be seeing. Okay, so now if I go to the beginning of our animation, I can press Shift left arrow. That will also take us to the beginning of the animation. So what I want to do is I want to, what I liked at the beginning of the sound is, see how the sound gets louder at the beginning? So I'm going to do an effect where it starts dark and it, and it gets loud. So, sorry, it gets bright. So if I look at all my lights, um, they've got these settings, the top one's at 1500, bottom one at 800, um, and the final one at uh, 500. I'm going to just um, up these a little bit. I think it could be a little brighter. So. Might, might make that a lot brighter. 1200. 
and I don't know, just kind of doing a little bit of guesswork here. So what I want to do is I want to find out where they will be at their full brightness. So if I look at my sound, I'm just dragging this little um, bar here so I can see my sound a bit better. And I'm going to listen to it. I'll press play. OK, I think I'll have the lights on full here. So I'll just go into the lights and I'm going to put a keyframe on the power section here. And I can right click and insert keyframe or on the next one, I can just press the letter I on my keyboard, which will add a keyframe. Much faster way to do it. OK, and if you look at the dope sheet here, now we have this keyframe. And if I select all the lights, they've all got that keyframe there. And if I want to jump to that keyframe, I can press the up arrow and it'll take me to the next keyframe, which I put on frame 70. So shift left arrow to go back to frame zero. And I'm going to put a, a keyframe on all of them with the power at zero. And I'll put this one also at zero. And each time after I put in zero, I'm pressing the letter I. So now if I select all of them, that power is yellow when there's a keyframe there. And so now if I press play, the lights should come up. OK, nice. That's good. So one other thing that I did a little earlier, which I forgot to undo, was I also put a keyframe on, if I go into rendered mode, on the glowing part of this light. So if we go here on the emission shader, you can see I've also put a keyframe. So what I've got here is maybe I'll just delete this keyframe. So if I go here, back to that um, delete keyframe. I think there's a, OK, is so it just that keyframe? And delete the keyframe on the strength. OK, so what that sh OK, and we've also got a keyframe at the beginning. So I'll have to delete that as well. OK, and I'll delete the keyframe on the color. And I'll just put the color back up to that white. And I think at the end it was something like that. OK, so there's our glowing light. So what I want to do, I'm going to have that glowing light come in and, and be glowing at 70. So I'll just insert the keyframe on the color and on the strength. And then going back down to the first keyframe, I'm going to put a keyframe for the strength to be 0. If I insert there, I found that it kind of comes up a little bit too quickly. So I also keyframe the color to be a little darker. And that seemed to just stop the glow coming in too quickly. So if I put the color down there and then keyframe that as well, to me it comes up a little bit more gradually. And it's kind of a bit nicer. Um, and the other thing we can do, if the keyframes aren't exactly where we want them, we can also just kind of grab them and, and move them around, which is kind of handy. Um, and I'll, I'll do that a little bit more later. So if I'm in the Animation tab now with my rendered view on the left and I press play, there we go. We've got the light and the, um, and the window pane um, coming up in time with the music, which is cool. So the next thing I did was I the first animated element I did was animating the bed sheet drawing back. And it kind of looks like, you know, maybe it's like early in the morning and um, and the bed, the bed sheet is being drawn. So, you know, I don't have to get the timing of it perfect because I can move it around a bit. So I'm just going to play and listen to my music and see when it feels like a good time to draw the bed sheet back. So lights come up. So maybe I would start drawing it back here, kind of when the lights come in, so maybe around frame 80 and maybe finish drawing it back around frame, I don't know, 180 or something like that. So if I go back to frame 80, I can select that down there to just jump straight to that frame. What I want to do, your bed sheet probably looks a bit like this. So if we scale it on the x-axis, it'll scale in the middle, which won't look like a bed sheet sort of drawing. Um, we want it to scale from this side and get smaller here. And there's a trick we can do um, just using the scale of the bed sheet um, to do that. What we can do is instead of have the origin of the bed sheet sort of in the middle of the object, we can put the origin right at the end and then it will scale right down to just to the end as if the bed sheet is being drawn back. So to do that, if I select um, this face here and then with uh, if I hold Shift S 
I can put the 3D cursor, which is this little thing here, so if I move it again and put 3D cursor to selected, it's put the 3D cursor in the middle of what I had selected, which was this face. So now if I press tab and go back into object mode, right click, set origin to geometry, no, sorry, origin to 3D cursor. Now if I press SX, it's just compressing down to where we put the 3D cursor, which looks like the bed sheet is being drawn, which is kind of cool. So now I'm going to uh, insert a keyframe uh, at 80, and then I'll go to frame 180, and I'm going to scale on the x-axis down to something that gives us kind of like a drawn sheet shape. I don't want to make it completely tiny or backwards. I'm just going to have it about there. That's cool. And then using I, I'll put another keyframe there. So now we have these two keyframes and the bed sheet is moving back. So if I start again, now the bed sheet's moving back. Okay, so that, that was the first sort of action that I had um, in the animation. Now the second thing when I made this animation is I kind of had to think about like what are the major things that I want to do. And if you remember my video, I sort of had two things. I had this moment where all of the items on the bed get compressed and they kind of squish up and then they all move themselves into the middle of the room here and then they transform into the body and the body starts dancing. And I sort of did that using um, a combination of things, basically on how the music sounded to, to find interesting times where it fit and also how much motion data I had because the motion data, um, if I bring it back, you'll see it doesn't really go forever. If I press play here, it stops after some point. So I've only got a limited amount of motion in this file. So we can kind of use it a little bit carefully. Okay, so going back to the music, I'm gonna show you where I found those points. So if I listen, there was this nice kind of music, then it starts to get a little bit mysterious around here. So I press M to put in a marker there, and that just marks part of my timeline. And this section goes for a little while. And then it comes back into this kind of delicate, optimistic part, which is where I put the dancing in. So I've got that second marker. So the second marker is where I want my dancing to start. So I will um, just adjust my motion capture file so that the dancing starts um, where that music starts. So if I go to that marker, I think it's around 1743. I'm just going to look, find my keyframes for my motion file. Okay, there they are. I just sort of, to find my keyframe, I just press tab and hit A to make sure I'm sort of got everything selected. And eventually I get all of the keyframes. These are all of the different motion keyframes on every single part of the body. And with the letter A having them selected, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna press G for grab, and I'm just gonna move them, um, basically, to this marker at 1743. So I'll just put myself at 1743. And basically, I just wanted to kind of start moving at that point, really. So there's a bit of a kind of an idle motion, so it's not really doing much. And then it starts dancing kind of around here. So I'm going to just keep a little bit of that idle. And just before it starts dancing, I think I'll do something like that. Um, and the trick we're going to do is we're going to have some objects attached um, to the to the dancer and then we'll use a second set of objects for the bedroom so that we can have them do two things at once so even if the this motion which we we don't actually see this skeleton in the final render um, we only see the objects we attach to it so we can kind of do a few tricks that way so I'll just leave the motion there I think that's kind of cool and then I'll probably end the animation I guess um, in this last part of the thing oh, and I also might move it back a little bit just so um, uh, the dancer doesn't step off the floor. So something like that, and I'll move it up a bit so the feet don't also go, don't go through the floor. Maybe move it up a tiny bit more. 
Dance, 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 dance. Great. Okay. And for the purpose of the video, I might turn the volume down on this a little bit so it's not too loud in the background. Just put that to 0.9. Okay, so what have we got? We've got, um, we know that, okay, so that, I forgot to turn my keyframe off there. So if I go back here, I'm just going to delete the keyframes on the mattress because I forgot to, okay. That, that's fine, okay. Okay. So we've got our first animation of the sheet being pulled back. We've got our armature in the right place. And we know that at the beginning, after the bed sheet gets pulled back, we'll start folding up all the other items. And then by this point, we'll have them all stacked in the middle. And then they'll slowly start sort of moving over and finding the figure. And everyone, as you're doing this yourselves, you know, this is where you sort of get creative, you know, depending on what sound you have and what motion you have, when you have these keyframes is, re is really up to you. Um, and I'm going to show you lots of ways that we can keep moving them around to change our mind. So I've got this first keyframe of the mattress. Um, so that's all good. And what I'm also going to do, a lesson that I learned at the beginning, I'm just going to keyframe everything at the beginning, the location, the rotation, and the scale, just in case I make any strange changes um, later that I don't want to sort of change the beginning of my animation. Um, I made that mistake before and I, <laughs> I destroyed the beginning point part of my animation. So I just want to sort of keyframe all those initial states. So let's um, fold up another object. So we've got the mattress here. So what we can do with the mattress is we can just, if I press S and X, I can scale it on the X axis and S and Y and I can scale it on the Y axis. So, um, you know, let's have a listen to the music. So let's just put a keyframe, put a keyframe at the beginning of everything, location, rotation, scale. Then we'll just come back here somewhere and um, we'll put it another one at the beginning of the movement. Basically, what I've done here is if I put two keyframes, then in between these two points, it won't move. But after this point, if I put in another one with movement, let's say I scale on the x-axis here, and I keyframe the scale, or keyframe all, and say I come over here and I scale on the y, we could do that. Now we're going to get something like this. The mattress will start squishing on one axis, and then squishing on the other. That's kind of cool, okay. And if we want to change the timing of that, all we need to do is grab these last keyframes and we could make it happen earlier or we could make it happen later. So I'm just going to sort of leave that as it is and we'll just keep squishing some of our objects and just see kind of what fits really. what we might do. Maybe we'll do all of the bed at one at one time. That might look kind of interesting. So after we've done the mattress, I'm going to do the pillows. So now here, if you remember from the tutorial, you've actually got a one pillow that's mirrored. So I'm going to sort of undo that in a way and turn it into two pillows. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to apply the mirror modifier or hit Shift A to apply that. Now if I press tab and go into edit mode, I'm just going to go into wireframe mode by going, pressing the Z key, hit wireframe, and I'll drag select one of the pillows, right click, and I will separate by selection. So now we've got two pillows. I'll go back into material preview. The other thing I want to do, if, if I rotate this pillow on the X -ax Z axis, RZ, you'll see its origin is actually where the other pillow is. So I want to give that its own origin in the center of its mass. So by right clicking, I'll set origin to, to geometry. So now it sort of moves um, just like the other one with its own center mass. Okay, so looking back at where our keyframes were with the mattress, I'll start in the same position and I'll just keyframe all of these initial positions of the pillows. And looking at the mattress again, maybe I'll do it all in sync. So maybe this one I'll go, I don't know, scale Y. Maybe we'll do the X actually first. Scale X, 
I don't know, maybe 0 0.5, 0 0.5, I can type that. You can just press SX 0.5 and it'll do that automatically. And I'll just keyframe here. And this one also, SX 0.5, enter. And then I, I, I to keyframe. And now if I click on the mattress, oh, on the mattress, and then I'll go to this next keyframe by pressing the up arrow. I'll do some keyframing on the on the y-axis. So here I'll go S, Y, I don't know, 0.7. I'm thinking of sort of body part lengths. That's why I'm doing these, these lengths. I'll put in those keyframes and I'll do this one also, S, Y, 0.7. Okay, so now if we go here, we've got the pillows and the mattress keyframing at the same time. And it's kind of got a nice sort of weird feel to it. Like a, if we're going for this sort of bed turning into a bit of a robot thing, maybe keyframing everything at the same time might be a nice idea. I didn't think about it the first time, but I kind of like it. So I'm going to do the same thing um, to the bed frame here. So I'll put in an initial keyframe here, and then I'll press the up arrow to get to my... Um, first keyframe on the mattress and use the same position here and I'll go S, X, maybe something like point 0.1, point 0.1 and then keyframe here and then the next keyframe is at frame 421 and I'll go S, Y, maybe point 0.4 and insert, insert, insert. Yeah, okay, that's cool. So now these are kind of a similar size, which might be good for when we do our um, stuff with our robot. So now if we go back here, we've got... Yeah, this kind of nice synchronicity here. It looks kind of interesting. Okay, all right, so now let's just apply the same thinking to um, the bed head. Now the bed head, you might notice its scale is not um, all at one. It's got these strange numbers here and that goes back to how we modeled it. So this time I'm just going to apply the scale. I'll show you what that means if I press um, uh, Control A and I go scale, you'll see those numbers all go to one and the object hasn't changed. And what that means is it's just set the natural scale of the object back to one which makes the animating much much easier. So now if I go to our first keyframe position I'll add those first keyframes, go to our second position by pressing the up arrow and I made this one the head before and it kind of worked so I'll do that again I'll go S Y this time and I might make it really pointy like that and insert the keyframes and I don't know if I want to do anything on the on any other axis let me just check if I go to our next keyframe position Maybe I'll just raise it up um, and I'll go GZ and raise it up here and keyframe it. Okay. Okay, so now I've got the bed collapsing like this. Okay, um, so now the same thing with the, um, the square bed bases. So if you remember, um, we also used the mirror modifier here. So we can, um, we can separate them again. So. I'll just go back to these um, keyframe places and I will control A to apply that mirror modifier and then um, how many times should I separate them? We don't actually need that many objects but okay but we want to have the animation look okay. All right so if I go now into um, edit mode by pressing tab press Z to go into wireframe and I'm just going to separate at least some of them out so right click separate by selections now we have two different objects and I'll go back into material preview and at this one I'm going to put the origin in the center which is now put the little dot there and this one origin also in the center and they both have the scale applied they've both got a scale of one okay so I'll keyframe those positions so our bed stays like a bed at the beginning go to this keyframe and what can we do to them? What if we go like S, Y? Yeah, maybe we can make a kind of a nice body part out of that. So that's going to be about 0 
six or something, point zero six. Okay, and I hit keyframe and the same one here, S Y point zero six on my keyboard, and then hit enter and then I I I to insert keyframes. And what's another it's another movement we can do. Maybe we can rotate them 90 degrees, that might look cool. So on the next keyframe here, instead of doing the scale, I'm going to rotate it on the z-axis like this, 90 degrees. So what I can do here is I can just type in 90 and hit I, or I can, on the other one, I can press R, Z, 9, 0, enter, and then hit I. But the effect is the same. And I'll just keyframe the other parameters just to make sure we lock in every part of that movement in case we keyframe something else later. Okay, so let's look at our bed doing its kind of cool transition. Okay, that's nice. Okay, so let's just pack up. Um, what else have we not packed up in the bed? Maybe we'll. Maybe I'll make this one a little bit smaller too. So maybe in between um, the last two keyframes, we will transform the um, that first sheet we did into something also. So here I'm just going to keyframe this so that stays without any movement and then I'll press the up arrow, go to the next keyframe and here I will scale it on the Y axis by I don't know um, 0.5 and hit enter and then just keyframe all of the transforms. Okay so I'll go back to my mattress which was my guide. Bed gets all nicely folded up that's cool. And then what we can do, let's see how long we've got until our weird moment. Still quite a lot of time. So let's just have a listen and see when we should start sort of stacking it all up or, or having, it, you know, now we just have to find ways to make it look interesting basically so that the viewer, whoever watches this, is sort of, I don't know, entertained or that it looks beautiful. So I'll just play it again. So, you know, I might, at this point, I'm just going to watch that again. I think at some point I'll just get all of these folded up into a nice little area. Maybe by something like 550. And I'll just get them all folded up to the front somewhere. So what I can do is, at frame 550, I'll bring this one forward and I'll keyframe these parameters I'll bring this one forward uh, so that's interesting it's going to be directly on top of that that's not what we want because that when things go on top it, it just doesn't look that real you know it starts to look a bit strange so if I bring this one forwards okay that'll sit directly underneath that looks kind of cool so let's keyframe that and I'm being a little imprecise here. I could, if I look through the side views, GX, I'll be able to be a little more precise. Insert, insert, insert keyframe. So with this one, I might bring it on top. So if I look from the side and I press grab, I'm just going to bring it right on top and insert keyframes. And I might also rotate it to make it really kind of like OCD, all like little packed down into this tiny little block. You know, at the moment this animation is not really about anything, we're just sort of moving shapes around, but one of the things I like doing in 3D is just playing around and, you know, start with a piece of music and move shapes around and you slowly can start to tell a little story by just, you know, the actions that you make the shapes do and how it feels with the music. So that's sort of what I'm doing here. I'm going to just even the way I stack them, I'm going to make it really like obsessive and symmetrical and maybe that will start to sort of have a sort of an interest interest to it. That's just fitting underneath which is kind of satisfying 
and so I'll just keyframe that location and if I go to, the, to my whoop, my top view I'm just going to go to my x-ray view and I'll just really um, see if I can get it everything nice and packed in I could be more precise using snapping to have everything in the perfect location but I'm just kind of doing it by eye because you know it's not a very high resolution animation and it's got a bit of a sort of smooth handmade feel so um, but maybe we can talk about that at some point also the sort of the the types of movements where we're, we're making at the moment are also quite smooth um, we haven't made any any movements that are very like snappy um, maybe we will maybe we won't let's I'll just keep moving everything into a kind of an interesting position um, maybe we could even stack these things up we'll see how it looks if I do that see the movements are going to start they, they might start bumping into each other and doing strange things but it's really just an introduction to animation to show you guys the basic ideas of keyframing mainly these parameters as well as the lights and colors and so on um, so you get the idea that basically most parameters in an animation program are keyframable and so that's sort of where we you know turn um, an image making program into a program that makes um, that makes movies and makes animations so let's just see what we've got here that's not too bad it looks kind of cool it looks better than my first try I think with them all stacked in this little I don't know ice cream sandwich thing so I'll go back to that keyframe and I'll put this head thing um, on the side uh, maybe I'll put it right on the top so it'll come down a little bit uh, something like that and you'll notice that this ball is still moving because it's got its um, I think it's got its mirror modifier to the bedhead, but I'm just going to leave that because it makes this funny little accidental animation where the ball the ball starts moving around and doing weird little things that I thought was kind of a happy little accident the first time I made this. So I'm going to leave that there. Okay, so that's our bed all stacked up. So now we go da, 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 bed 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 gets stacked. And now in the meantime, let's let's just have a little watch. Maybe right before that, I might start doing um, doing some things with with these lampshades. So and the rest of the furniture. So again, the lampshades have the mirror modifier. So I want to separate them into two. So I'll uh, Control A, apply that mirror modifier, go into wireframe mode, edit mode by pressing Tab, and I just want to drag select one of the lamps, right click, and hit separate by selection. If I go back into Material Preview, now we have two separate lamps. And I want to make sure both of them have their origin in the center of the geometry. OK, so now what I'm going to do, as well as receiving emails according to my computer, um, is I'm going to, at this point, I'll just keyframe all of their um, location, rotation, and scale parameters. And I may as well just um, pop that in at the beginning, just so we don't mess up our original scene. Go back to that keyframe and what I want to do is I want to lift them up into the air and have them start spinning. I thought that looked kind of cool before. So I'll lift them both up, G, Z, lift them up and insert keyframes. And now if I just put in a number like um, 360, enter and insert and do that on the other one. 360, enter, and just re keyframe that. If I go down, now they'll be spinning. I don't know if the speed is any good. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. All right. So now that's one change onto the lampshades. And at that same moment, I will use that as the timing to, um, to start having everything else move. So I'll look at the lamps themselves. Same thing, they used the mirror modifier in the previous tutorial. So Control A to apply that, and then Z to go into wireframe mode, edit mode by pressing tab, drag select one of them, right click, separate by selection. 
So now we have two separate lamps and just make sure both of them have their origins at the geometry so that little orange dot is in the middle. So we know that um, they'll rotate in the correct position. And we'll just keyframe all their parameters here and here. And just to be on the safe side, I'm going to do it at the beginning because I'm a little bit obsessive. Okay, so now we'll go up arrow to go back to this keyframe. And now up arrow to go to that place where the lamp moved up. And I'm going to move both of these up, move them up. And I'm going to keyframe that. And I'm also going to change their shape a little. So maybe like S. And I can press X, Y, and then point 0.3. Oh, that didn't work. Hold on. So I thought that keyboard command would work. I screwed that up. Anyway, S, X, hold on. S, X, point 0.3. S, Y, point 0.3. It's made them maybe a little bit too skinny. I'm going to undo that. Oh, also, I can see, let's just go back. I'm going to undo a little bit. I didn't apply their scale, and that I find just a little bit annoying. So I'm going to go back here and um, apply their scale. And that, um, that means I'm going to have to re-keyframe it here and on the first keyframe. So I'll have to set that to 1. And on this one, drag select the three boxes. Oh, that's something we haven't done before. If you click on the top box with your left mouse and drag it down, you can set all of them to 1 or any value at the same time and hit insert. Okay. Okay, so now um, I will also just put this back to 1 before I do the changes that I wanted to do. So let's go, say I go SX.3 and SY.3. No, 0.3 is a little bit too skinny. SX.4, yeah. Okay, and I'll keyframe that. And here, SX.4, SY.4. Keyframe that by pressing I. Okay, so now we've got lamps come up. Um, these get a little skinny. And I'm, I'm thinking of, I'll put them on the arms or something like that. I was thinking maybe the forearms. Um, and then we'll probably do something also with the, um, with the tables now. So if we go back, back to this position where the lamps begun, and we'll do something with the tables. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn these tables all into one object. So that means we've got a few different mirror modifiers going on. I'll apply the first one here. But now we've got the legs. And when you apply these, I'll do it the wrong way first, and you'll see what happens. If I do the bottom one, and then the top one, you'll see something gets messed up here. And basically, with applying modifiers, you usually want to apply them in the order that you're using them. Um, I'm going to leave the bevel one there, but here I'll apply the top one by hovering over it and pressing Control A, and then the bottom one by pressing Control A. And we've kept all of our legs. OK, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to Shift Select um, these uh, the drawers, and I'm going to press Control J. And that just turns it all into one object. And I'm also going to do the same with the little handles. So I will apply the, middle, the mirror modifier as well. And then Shift Select here, Control J. So now this is all one object. And I'll right click to undo that move. And now I'm just going to separate them into two tables. So again, I'll go into wireframe mode by pressing Z, and then Tab. And I'll just drag select everything here. Right click, separate by selection. So now we've got uh, two bedside tables. But I want to make sure they both have their origin in the center at the geometry. OK, so now let's go back. Um, and I'll just keyframe all of their positions here. Oh, and I need to apply their scale. Apply their scale. So they have a scale of 1. OK, so now insert, 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 insert. And for my OCD, I want to make sure that, we've, that the whole scene is keyframed at the beginning, just so um, we keep that beginning scene. OK, so back to the lamp. As the lamp moves up, what I'm thinking, as long as it doesn't conflict with this movement, I was thinking of rotating these upside down, like RX180, like that. So I'm just going to keyframe that and see 
if it hopefully nothing gets in the way. Zzz, yeah, that looks cool. But on the other one, I'm going to do RX minus 180 because I want it to sort of have them both turn into the middle. So I'll keyframe that again. Yep, no, I did that in the wrong place, didn't I? Yes, so <laughs> I stuffed that up. Okay, I'll just press undo. Okay, so I wanted to do that here. Yeah, at this keyframe. So here, this should be RX minus 180. Okay, that's better. Insert, insert, insert. Nice. So now, rip, that looks kind of cool. And maybe I'll spin them as well. Because I've got those legs, they might look kind of satisfying when they spin. So, um, when did I start spinning? Maybe these ones. I'll have a second keyframe where, um, let's say I'll go to, I don't know, here or something, uh, 850, that feels, why not? 850, and I'm going to rotate on the z-axis. I'll just um, 360 and keyframe that and rotate on the z-axis 360, keyframe that. So now we've got this kind of it turns and they start. Oh, ah, that's interesting. So when I put the um, the origin to the geometry, the geometry is not actually in the center of these um, of the circle. It's kind of a bit off to the right, probably because of the the handle or something. So they're not. I think the ha I think the center should be somewhere else. Let's fix that. Okay, all the things we're learning. Okay, I want to have the center in the center of this um, circle. So. I've gone into edit mode, I've selected that face, shift S, cursor to selected, and now go out of edit mode, right click, set origin to geometry. And let's do the same on this one. So I've gone into edit mode, selected the bottom face, shift S, cursor to selected, so the cursor's jumped there, tab to go out of edit mode, right click, origin to geometry. Now, huh. Still not quite getting the rotation I thought we'd get. Oh, I'm a <laughs> that's because I pressed the wrong button. Okay, sorry, it should be um, origin to 3D cursor. <laughs> that makes more sense. Okay, now that works. All right, that's quite funny. All right, so <laughs> I just have to go back to this one and do the same thing. So let's go back to when it was upside down. So I have to go Shift S. Um, set the 3D cursor and now set origin, origin to 3D cursor. So now, now they rotate as if they're kind of a geometrical object. Much better. All right, so now in that rotation, I think we can also change their scale. It could look cool. So let's go like, um, what if we change like SX to 0.5, SY to 0.5, um, and SZ to 0.8, something like that. I'm thinking these could be legs or arms or something. So I'll just keyframe that. And SY 0.5, SX 0.5, SZ 0.8. I'll keyframe that. Okay, and at the same time, let's move them up a bit. So let's go like, um, if I look from the front, grab them both, G, Z, Ooh, what if they spin around? What if we make them the same height? Maybe that'll keep help with this kind of weird robotic feel that we're going for. What if we like frame that? That might look cool. So let's um, keep frame that. And now we've got this sort of effect here. Let me just check everything's... You know, I just noticed, aha, uh -huh. okay. We have to change that first keyframe because when I changed the origin of my tables, it actually moved my tables forwards a bit. <laughs> now my lamps are not in the center of my table. Good gosh, OCD, put these back. All right, so what we need to do is keyframe here, but also we wanna have the same numbers here. So actually we can just um, shift D, duplicate that keyframe 
and you know I can actually just delete this one 502 so I'm just going to grab all these X to delete keyframes and then I'll just grab these and bring them forwards and that should but it didn't what did I do wrong clearly something oh because I didn't keyframe the other table lol okay <laughs> okay all right so hold on um, I'm just going to copy some of the numbers this time so minus we're only changing one axis the x-axis here so I want that number so I'm just going to click on that and go control C and put here and I just hover over control V keyframe and then I'll go up to the next keyframe and I'll just control V again and insert keyframe okay cool all right the benefit of making lots of little mistakes and then showing you how to fix them okay uh, looks like I also forgot to keyframe the height on this one because I was selecting both but only keyframing one so let's just um, do that same trick again the only thing we changed here I think was the height so if I grab I just hover over here and control C and hover over here and control V and then I to insert now we should have a weird little animation there okay so now let's see how that goes with the music Yeah, so you know the timing and stuff might not be perfect, but it, it looks interesting enough. So now after this keyframe, I think we'll start moving everything forwards so that um, I'm guessing by here, we want them all in place. Yeah, so let's go back to that keyframe and you know if the timing's no good, we can move it around a bit. And then let's go to uh, 1016, 1016, so we're on that marker. And let's find some cool way to stack them all up. Maybe we'll stack them um, by the side so it all goes in a line or something. Could look nice. So I'll go from the top view. And I'll grab, I'll grab both of the, both of this, the um, bedside tables. So I keep clicking on the light. Bedside tables, top view. GX, that looks about good, and I'll just quickly grab that location, then um, I'll just do this one individually, GY, um, maybe something like that, something like that, remember to keyframe them both, and these ones, the lampshades, we could bring them both forwards by pressing GX. Look from the top view, what have we got? GX. Bring them in the middle, and now this one. I don't know. You know, I could put them right in the middle, but I sort of. Yeah, why not? It could look cool. Okay, so I'll just keyframe all that. And this one, so I need to GY this across. And I'll just look from the top to check that it's in the middle. Actually, I'll just. Eyeball it by pressing G and moving it on both the X and Y axis. Insert those keyframes. And the lampshades, why don't we put them straight on top as well? That could look nice and weird. So I'll just grab that using the G key and insert. And maybe I'll add another by pressing plus, plus 360, gives us 720. So that's a cool thing. You can actually do little mathematical operations in these. If you don't know the number off the top of your head, I'll show you that again. If I grab this one and put it here, and say I want to spin it around again, I can just hit plus 360, and of course that's 720. I'll keyframe those together. So now we've got this sort of funny animation, you know, and I think if everything else is spinning, I may as well make these ones spin as well. So go to that keyframe and I'll add another 360 there and insert the keyframe. And I'll keep the scale keyframed and I'll add another 360 here 
and keep that keyframe. So blah, 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 blah. Weird flying things go to the middle of the room. That's cool. Looks like I'll, yeah, okay. The lighting might not be perfect, but that's okay. Okay, so now we're getting into that weird part. The one thing we haven't done is um, the dresser. So maybe somewhere in here I should do that as well. Yeah, this is nicer than my original, I think. That, I think that symmetry has kind of given a nice effect. Um, and maybe somewhere in here... And one other effect we might do, instead of just bringing this one floating it around, maybe we'll have it come across the wall and then around. So we'll do a little bit more specific keyframing. It might be more fun to look at. Um, and I'm trying to give you some more ideas in how you can make something that's hopefully like a lot better than mine, basically. Okay, so um, here I need to apply the scale. So I'll apply the scale and I'll put in that original keyframe and I'll also just go back and just put in a keyframe at the origin too, just so our original scene is locked in. And then here, you know, let's say, let's say it goes along here first in a kind of a sliding motion. And let's keyframe that. Now, what I want to do is I want to have it sort of, you know, turn around and move forward. So I'm going to, so, so now that we've done this, here, I'm going to go a little bit forwards and I'm going to rotate it 90 and keyframe it. And then I'm just going to sort of eyeball how we should move it. So here, I want it to end I want to kind of turn a corner, so what if I just grab it out a bit and keyframe that. So now it's coming at sort of sliding. How does that feel? Yeah, that's not too bad. Boom. Boom. Yeah, okay, so now that keyframe, let's just keyframe all of the other parameters. And now let's have another movement where it comes on the y-axis back to here, something like that. Keyframe, keyframe, oops, keyframe that. Keyframe, keyframe. And then a final keyframe where it comes forwards like this. And then I'm gonna change its scale at the end. I think that'll look more interesting. Okay, now all of the timing here is wrong because I want all of this to be done by that marker. So what I can do is I can actually G for grab, I can move these back, but I can also scale them and make them a little faster. So if I go SX, I can kind of scale them and speed them up a little bit. And let's just see how that works. Yeah, cool. So I want to have that a little bit earlier because by this point, by 1016, I want to have it, I want to have its size change as well. So let's just um, change its size to, it's going to be the middle of the body. So I'll go SX on a SY, something like that, and SZ, something like that. Actually, let's look at it next to the armature. I'm going to use it in this area, so SX, yeah, I think that'll be cool. All right, so now, um, and maybe we'll, um, maybe we'll even put it on the ground. See how that looks, it might go through the floor a little bit. No, it's okay. Okay, so. Um, you know, for those of you who've done some animation, I'm doing these techniques, they're not like super realistic or anything, but it's just, you know, showing you very basic ideas on how to um, uh, keyframe different parameters. And then once you've got this, there's, there's lots of other ways that we can go for more realistic motion or more dramatic motion. This is just kind of an intro. So, okay, so now if I play that, we've got our funny little, um, uh, a funny little <laughs> pack-up routine. Now we've got this long quiet period. What we could do, we could use that entire long quiet period to put our body together. 
Um, and you know, you might have some more creative ideas here, but I need to keep this tutorial reasonably quick because it's getting quite long already. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and that's where our music's going to start. Now I'm just going to stop the recording and restart it just um, so that everything uh, works properly. Just a moment. <laughs> 